what's going on everybody this is Island Hopper TV and today we're going to talk about the best things to do while visiting Seoul South Korea let's do it that's right Island Hoppers there's going to be 26 things to do here in Seoul I went all around this city of 10 million people and I'm excited to show you now here we are at the Lotte Tower let's take a look this massive tower is 123 floors standing over 1,821 feet. It is a mega skyscraper and you can go all the way to the top where they have several decks for observation where you get 360 degree views. Standard tickets for adults start at 29,000 won. If you wanted to include the lounge on the top floor, that's gonna be 39,000. It might just be worth it. But if you wanted to get the fast pass on a busy day, expect to pay 50,000. This is the fifth largest tower in the world, so you're quite high up there and you really feel it. And just a side note, the Korean currency is called the Korean won and one US dollar equals 1,356 Korean won at the time of making this video. So you can do the math at home when I give you the prices. Now here we are at one of the most popular walking streets and shopping areas, Myeongdong. This here is an amazing place to hang out with locals and tourists alike. In the evenings, the shopping area turns into a night market where they have plenty of street food vendors. I personally like to get a little bit of everything and get familiar with the Korean food when I got here. That's everything from egg tarts to steak, barbecue. And another popular area is called Itaewon. This is popular with young people, mostly partying enjoying the pubs and the nightlife. I came here on a Friday night around 9 p.m. and I found it to be very nice, good environment, great food here, restaurants. So if you're looking for a place to hang out on the weekend or at night, consider Itaewon. One of the cool things about Seoul is there's so many free things to do while here. I'm here at the National Museum of Korea. Totally free to get in here. This is quite an impressive national museum for Korea. I mean, it is an amazing architectural structure. And if you're really a history nerd, you're gonna love this place. But even if you're not, there's still a lot of cool stuff to be had here and checking out this building. I personally found the calligraphy and the currency, these coins here to be quite interesting, but there's so much to see here. Even if you go up to the third floor, it's world history. And how can you really go wrong with something that's free? There was a few different things I did in Seoul that were free. I mean, I could probably make a full video about free things to do in Seoul if you guys really want me to. Now here we are at the palace. And this here is the Gyeokbongung National Palace. Really an impressive site. Built in 1395, this was the heart and soul of the Korean Peninsula for, for the Joseon Dynasty. And it served as the home for the royal family there's actually five different grand palaces around the Korean Peninsula area where the royal family would come together, but this was the largest complex. So that's what you're getting right here. The entrance fee is 3,000 won per person. That comes out to around $2.20 per person. Not a bad price. Also, you'll see there's a lot of tourists who dress up in the traditional dresses and the clothing of the Joseon uh, dynasty. And there's no such thing as cultural appropriation really in Korea. So people do that without having to worry. In fact, they encourage it. And while here, you can learn more about the history of the Korean people at the National Folk Museum of Korea. It's definitely worth going in there and spending an hour walking around. I found there to be lots of artifacts. I learned things about kimchi and some of the food that I never knew, but I kind of always wondered. So kimchi is basically fermented cabbage, but it can also be other kinds of veggies like carrots, garlic, ginger, scallions. Most of it is fermented. It's considered a really good probiotic. That's what I learned here. And the reason kimchi came about was because they get really harsh, cold winters. So after the harvest, they have to store it and keep it for the winter so they have food. And after you visit the palace, you can go stop and get some tea because Korean tea is very tasty and something of a tradition that you should partake in if you can. So stopping to get some Korean tea and then heading over to the, the Bukchon Hanak village. This is a very historical place for you to walk around. You're gonna see old houses, very beautiful. You're not gonna find a place like this in the modern Seoul. So get a chance to walk around here, take some pictures. There are a few different photo spots. So if you're in an inst 
So if you're an Instagrammer, you're gonna really enjoy this village. They had a store that sold various different scents and perfumes. You may consider looking that place up because I saw it was popular with a lot of the ladies who were shopping in the area. Just down the road a bit is the Guang Hamen Gate. This is a square area, people come to gather. It's just outside of the palace really, but it's still in that same area. So you can do all of these activities, the last four things right here in the same area, quite easily just walking around. Next up, we're headed to the Korean War Museum, where they have loads of Korean War military equipment, everything from ships to aircraft, tanks, guns, you name it. Lots of military equipment just sitting out here in front, and then you go inside. The day I was here, they were actually doing a ceremony, so I didn't get to go inside. But if you did want to go in, the price would be free. Yep, another free thing to do here. But if they do have special exhibits, the prices can go up to around 15,000 won or around 15 US dollars, depending on the exhibit. But overall, really, you gotta come here and visit this place if you're a history person. One thing I will say about the DMZ, which is the demilitarized zone, it's actually an hour and a half north of Seoul, so it's very close. Seoul is on the northern part of the peninsula, very close to North Korea. That's kind of an interesting tidbit for people who are visiting. You can do a tour up there, I just did not. If you did want to do a tour to the DMZ for all day or half day, it's around $50 per person. Another activity you can do is going to be the Namsan cable car. It's around 14,000 Korean won. That comes out to about nine US dollars for round trip. If you wanted to do one way, it's 11,000, then you can walk back down. But then when you get up there, you get to go to the top of the Namsan Tower, where you get another area for great views. The tower is 236 meters tall. It was completed in 1980. And the ticket price to go up here is going to be around 16,000 won or around 10 to $11 per person. That's in addition to the cable car. Now let's talk about ice skating. This is here at Lotte. This is here at Lotte World. And the price is gonna be around $9. That's about 12,000 Korean won. So if you guys are looking to get some ice skating action in, this is the place to do it. It's not seasonal. It was definitely open in the fall. And while here, you can also do Lotte World. This is an indoor theme park. They have everything indoors, including the bungee drop, the balloon ride. You can also take the monorail around both indoor and outdoors. You have the flume ride. So really a great park. Kids love this place. Because it is indoors, it's open year round from 9.30 until 10 p.m. And the regular admission price is around 36,000 won. That's about 32 US dollars. And for kids, it's 29,000 won or $26. Just outside is gonna be Lotte Magic Island. I would consider this more for the big kids and the adults because the rides out here are definitely gonna get the adrenaline flowing with the world monorail and the castle probably being the most relaxed, but the bungee drop, then you have the mirror maze, so much to do here. So head outside, take a look at that place. You could easily spend all day, at least a half a day, just hanging out here. And it is right next to the very tall tower and a beautiful mall. So this really is probably one of the better locations for families to stay if you want that resort kind of experience in Seoul. It's also very modern. So consider this area if that's something that you're into. And as we continue to show you around, I want to let you know that we also went down to Busan and we're making a video about Busan. So if you're going to Korea, consider doing both Busan and then uh, Seoul. And you can easily get there on a bullet train. I actually rode the bullet train and it took around two and a half to three hours. And it's high tech, very fast and efficient, much better than riding an airplane. So do watch that video when it comes out. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing, but let's keep showing you around Seoul. Next to Latte World, they do have the Charlotte Theater where they have the Phantom of the Opera play. Here we are now at Olympic Park. 
Olympic Park's a nice area to walk around. This is actually where they held the 1988 Olympics, for those of you who are old enough to remember. The flame is still going hot here, but one of the cool things I really like about the Olympic Park is that you can walk around here. It's a nice place to escape the city, inside of the city, of course. But then you go over to the park, and there's a popular tree that people like to take pictures of. They call it the Lone Tree. The best angle for the picture is going to be down on the other side, looking up towards the hill. You probably want to be here when there's not a lot of crowds, so you can get that early in the morning. But when you're here, you'll probably see a lot of crowds, although it's still a cool picture. And by now you're probably wondering, how are you going to get around to all of these destinations? Well, I recommend getting a Metro card and riding the subway. Seoul is a big city and it is spread out, but riding the Metro can make it much more efficient. You can also take taxis, but when you get to Seoul, try to get a T card. You can purchase one at 7-Eleven and they typically cost around 2,500 Korean won. And then once you get it, you top it up. I would put around 15,000 per card. So once you have that money on there, you'll notice it'll last you a whole week. Unless of course you're constantly going in and out of the subway system, but getting around from, but getting around long distance, this is a great way to go about it, even short distance. Next up is the Gangnam statue. For those of you who know Sai Gangnam style, this is a place where people go to take a picture with the statue and kind of dance with the music that's playing. It is right next to a very large Coex convention center and mall, so you can do that while you're also at the Gangnam statue. One of the best ways to get around and exercise as well as see neighborhoods is to rent one of the bikes. I recommend downloading the Kakao app and then on there they're going to have the Kakao tea bike and even scooters. And for those who want to check out a temple, you can go to the Bonganusha. Buddha's temple complex, walk around and take pictures and even check out some of the offerings and prayer, prayer houses. Now let's talk about some of the local food. We touched on kimchi earlier. This is a look at kimchi and soup is very popular. Barbecue, now remember Korean barbecue, you can go into the restaurant, order up some spare ribs or some meat. They got pork belly, they've got beef. And this is something that's really popular. Also bulgogi and then more and more soup porridge and even fried chicken. So Korean food is some of the best you'll find in all of the world. It's really famous and you can get a variety of the food right here in Seoul and see where it all comes from. Korean street food is probably my favorite and this here is a look at egg tart. Those are fermented quail eggs. And here I tried some pumpkin taffy. It's actually a Korean traditional food. They say it's really good for your digestion and respiratory system. The guy making it said you get energy from it. But for me, cast beer and Korean barbecue beef is my absolute favorite. Do be sure to eat that kimchi for probiotics. Now we're going to K-Star Road. This here is in Gangnam. People like to come here and just take pictures with these statues of the little uh, mascots. In fact, a cool activity to do is rent one of these scooters and just buzz up and down K-Star Road and that's something to do. In the nighttime, it's always nice to be along the riverfront. This here is the Han River. It's one of the largest rivers in Asia. And yeah, just coming down here, they have concerts and they have floating islands. So make a point of going down there, whether it's in the daytime to walk around a park 
and just relax or in the evening time to take in a concert. I'm almost certain many of you already know about K-pop or the K-pop culture. Different dramas and TV shows and movies about K-pop and the culture, so young women love it. And if you get a chance, try to understand it when you get here to Korea. But Seoul is one of the main places for K-pop. I personally would love to go to a concert and see Psy live. That guy's got tons of energy. For those of you who are into art, you should check out the National Museum of Modern Art. This here is the Contemporary Art Museum of Seoul. So do check that out. Now for my final thoughts on Seoul and things that I want you to know before arrival. When you arrive into Incheon, keep in mind that it is an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and 30 minutes depending on if you take the train or a taxi to the city center of Seoul. Incheon is a totally different city. Also, when you're at the airport, these are the things I recommend you do right away. I recommend you get a Korean SIM card with data and a phone number. Don't just get data. So make sure you get that. Then also getting on that T card. Make sure you get that transit card from 7-Eleven. Probably do that your first day. Also download the app family for Kakao. That includes the maps because Google Maps doesn't work very good. So Kakao Maps is gonna work a little bit better for navigation while you're in Seoul. That's important to know these things. And if you can download those apps before you get to Korea, all you have to do is just register your phone number and then you're in there. And that's gonna help make your trip a lot smoother because they don't have Grab, they don't have Uber. And you're gonna need to hail taxis at times from areas where there's not gonna be any taxis and having a rideshare app available certainly makes things a lot smoother. On that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this one from Seoul. If you did, please consider watching our Busan travel guide as well as our things to know about South Korea. We will see you on those videos next. I'll put a link right here.